Hello friend, my name is Asindra, and today I'm going to continue playing for you Uncommon Time by Feral Phoenix. Now last time, we explored the un- the- no, not under library, the deep library, um, in Libretto, and we fought a fire fairy, and now we're in Del Segno, looking for, uh, more people to join our quartet, and now we're gonna go to the inn. In the inn. In, 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 in. Anyway. Cutscene! Oh? That girl in the front is pretty good. Wait. Wait, wait. Something seems off. She shouldn't actually need to get her hand up into the fifth position on her A string for a piece like this. Is she just showing off? Whatever the case, it takes flexible hands and a high skill level to be able to play like that. Huh? I guess I just don't have the proper context. Because my hand positions have a lot more space in between, and they're pretty hard on the arm. Well, no matter whether you're playing a small instrument like ours or a big one like yours, precision is important when you're shifting. A violin or viola's higher positions put a lot of stress on the fingers and wrists because our positions are always cramped. Hmm, I guess so. No, I cannot believe this. Huh? What's wrong, Tegan? This idiot's playing with no E string at all. Whoa! Oh my! That's it! We've gotta ask her if she wants to come! If she can play like this when she's missing a string! I agree. I don't think that I could do the same. No. Where are you two looking? Her playing style's sloppy, and attempting a piece like this with a string missing is just rude to her instrument. She can't have been trained classically. Tegan, that's saying a little much. I'm trying to think of this in terms of our unity as a quartet. If we don't have a unified sound and can't work together, we'll fall apart during the performance. That's why you practice! Really? What did they even teach you if you don't know that much? But, Tegan, the music for world tuning isn't strictly classical style. Ugh. It's not easy to classify into any genre. And I don't think that classical style is all there is to playing an instrument, is there? I give up. What, did I say something weird? Not at all. I think that what both of you say has merit. The style in which we play is very different based on the genre of the song. And learning the historically the And learning the historically respected classical and baroque styles means that we obtain important Techno uh, technical knowledge. There's like 12 big words in that sentence that I can't read because it's 2 a.m. Uh, but modern techniques and styles are interesting and worthy of respect, too. A member of the New Guard, so to speak, can bring us new perspective. The problem is whether or not we can play cohesively when the time comes. Exactly. At any rate, Alto knows the best what will be required, and so this is Alto's choice. I think that it's worth trying. And besides, we haven't even spoken to her yet. There's no way of telling if she'll even be interested. You shouldn't leave it up to Alto. She's the one, like, she will definitely want to. I think we should go talk to her, see? Because she looks like she's having so much fun. Then, let's wait until they're done performing. Yay! Let's talk to the other one first. That was nice. Cool. It's been a while since anyone's done a gorilla live show here. <laughs> I was just imagining gorillas doing violin. That would have been hilarious. It's been a while since I've had that much fun with a jam session. Session. Free entertainment is the best. That was an interesting performance style. It's nice when someone comes and reminds you of how much fun music can be. It's enough to make this old lady feel like a spring chicken again. Before we talk to Mayrin, uh, which is her name, we're gonna go up here and see if we can go into any rooms, which seems unlikely. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. Fine. Be that way. Okay, let's go talk to Mayrin. 
Uh, unfortunately, I will not be playing as her because she is not as colorful as Saki. Like, literally, well, I mean, she is, but she's not. Like, he's got purple and green and, like, colors and stuff, and she's blue and black, which is also cool, but I want to like, stick out like a sore thumb in any place we go, so. <laughs> Cutscene. Thanks! It was really nice playing with you! Hey, we were listening to you play. You're pretty good. <laughs> Thanks! So, there was something I wanted to ask. Hmm? Oh, are you hitting on me? <laughs> what the heck? Of course not. Just kidding! So what do you need? My friends and I are making a string quartet. We're aiming for an important performance, but we still need a second violin. Would you be interested? Oh, so are you all going to Polyphony for the Star Festival too? Hmm, we'll be going to Polyphony, but our actual destination is Belcanto. What? This might be kind of a bad place to talk about it. Just one thing. If I went with you, would it mean that I'd miss the Star Festival? I don't think so. Then sure! Tell me more about it! But I've got to go down to the Instrument Maker's Hall to get my violin restrung. I've just been killing time here until they've opened. We can talk while they're working on it, so come with me if you want. Yes! I've been wanting to go take a look at the hall, let's go! Yeah! If you're a strings player, why else go to Del Sagno, right? Fuck my life. <laughs> they're gonna get on like a house on fire. <laughs> I'm Alto Cantabile. I play the cello. I guess I'm also the quartet leader? My name is Totoki Saki, and I play the viola. And the one over there making the I'm surrounded by idiots face is Tegan Almace. Cool. I'm Otoa Meirin. Otoa is written as Feathers of Sound, and Meirin is Strawberry Bell. My, what a cute name. <laughs> Thanks. The instrument maker's hall is at the north end of town, so let's go. Yay! Okay. So, north of the thing, which is basically this huge ass building over here. Yo. Oh, cutscene. Maybe? What? Oh, yes. Cool. Excitement! Look! Look at this place! Yeah, I see it. But are you really looking? Tegan! They have violas de gamba, whatever that means, and that's an octo bass. I've only read about those things in books before. Some of the violas on display here only have three strings. A lot of their choices in wood seem very interesting too. I mean, this is the hub of lumber, right? This country. The workshop's in the back corner. I don't know if I can keep doing that voice. <laughs> Anyways, let, before we go do the thing, we're gonna look at all the instruments! It looks like a viola at first glance, but it actually has only three strings. Oh! I've heard of a viola model that only uses three strings, but I've never seen one before. It's a violin. <laughs> yes, that, that is a violin. It looks like a viola, but on second glance it's too big to be one. This is a viola profonda. There are two kinds of them, violettas and tenor violins. They're not commonly used, so not many luthiers make them. My, I'm so glad I came to Harmonia. Just being able to see and touch these makes the whole trip worth it. Okay. We can't actually touch these, so I don't know what they are. I mean, those are bags, but whatever. I don't know. It looks like an ordinary viola, but it has seven strings. This is a viola d'amour. I've read about them in books of Baroque music, but I've never seen one before. Cool. It's a viola. <laughs> okay. It's an unusual instrument that looks like a bass, but is smaller than a cello and has more strings. This is a viola da gamba. I've read before that they're in the same family as basses. It'd be cool to learn to play them. It's an unusual... Yes, I think that's the one that... Okay, cool. Excuse me. It's a cello. It's a bass. It's a real octo bass. They're even bigger in real life than I thought they'd be. Alright. 
What do you have? Would you like to uh, see our variety of tools and accessories for string instruments? We do handle supplies for woodwind, bra uh, brass, brace, I wanted to say brace, and vocal performers too, so browse at your leisure. There's pine rosin, high grade rosin, a mute a ocarina, <laughs> and a tuning fork. Thank you. Alright, so this is the one that we want. If you're looking for instrument repairs, our luthier's workshop is through here. Actually, let's go talk to the pink haired lady first. This is the patisserie. Feel free to go in if you want a snack. Okay. Also, what I want to know is what are these? But they won't tell me. Because I don't know anything about instruments. So, like, I have. No well, I mean, even if they told me, I guess I wouldn't know what the hell's going on anyway, so. <laughs> Whatever. Excuse me, I'd like to get a new E string, please. Hmm, let's see. The wear and tear on your other strings is getting pretty bad, too. Would you like to get them replaced while we're at it? Sure. This is the first time I've had to get my strings replaced, so I wanted to be picky about where I got new ones from. Is that so? Then you'll want to be careful, since new strings go out of tune quicker. Yeah, I know. And I loosen my strings whenever I'm done playing, so I'm used to having to retune a lot. My E string broke when I was tuning, actually. Yeah, that'll happen with your thinnest strings. What about the rest of you? Would you like your instruments examined, too? I guess so. Between one thing and another. Hmm. This violin is in very good shape. There's nothing that we need to do here. Thanks. I've always done my best to look after it. Then, if you would be so kind. Let me see. Hmm. This viola is one of ours, isn't it? I had heard so. This little one has passed through many pairs of hands before it was given to me. No wonder. It looks like it's been run through the mill, but you can trust our workmanship to hold up under stress. It looks like the bridge is a bit bent and the wood finish needs to get it touched up. Since we're adjusting the bridge, we'll need to replace the strings anyway. Should I get to work on it? Mm, I'm a little worried about the pricing with all of that. Don't worry, we give a discount for instruments we've made. Thank goodness. Then, would you please? What about you, Alto? I don't actually have my own cello. What? <laughs> huh? Come to think of it. Then, what? Were you planning to buy one here or in some other city? No. Carrying a big instrument around would be too much trouble when we're all running around in areas with monsters. We won't be performing with our own instruments anyway. It's just convenient to have one with you to practice. My. You're underestimating the underlying issue here. Alto's never been allowed to have her own cello. The family house has got plenty of instruments, and the more I learn, the more they let me pick and choose which one I got to use. But none of them was ever really mine. Ah, but because of that, I'm pretty good at compensating for differences between instruments when I play using a new one. And I can rent a cello for rehearsals, so there's nothing to worry about there. It's like missing a piece of your soul. Alto. Would you happen to be? No, I'm probably just imagining Anyhow, it'll take a while to perform maintenance on these two instruments. It's not much compared to the inn, but we have an in-house patisserie at the other end of the hall where you can wait. Oh, the music was just getting good there, too. Can you tell me anything about the- no, no. They won't tell me a thing. Fine. Let's go to the patisserie! The patisserie! <laughs> We were running. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Okay. Uh, this place is really heaven. It really is. Instruments and sweets. That's a pretty interesting combination. Apparently, the founders of this hall were big sweet tooths. That's the lady standing in the by the doorway. Right now, this place is used as a restaurant by guests and townspeople. But originally, it was little more than a kitchen for the instrument makers when they were too busy to return home. That's a nice story. I'll be here to bring you whatever else you need, so make yourselves at home. Ooh, in that case, can I have another strawberry crepe? 
coming right up. Eating so much sweet stuff isn't good for you. Maybe so, but that's my problem. So, what are you performing at in Bel Canto? Technically, we're not actually performing in the city. We'll be playing at the top of Metronome Tower. And it's not really a normal performance either, with an audience. Uh, we're doing a ritual there. Then, miss, are you a Cantabile? Yeah. I thought so. Um, then you don't need to worry about praying, paying here, alright? There isn't much else we can do to support you, so please allow us to do what we can. Mm, if you insist! Okay. Mayrin has no idea what the hell's going on. It's fine. Hey, Mayrin, have you ever heard of the world tuning? Nope. Oh. Hmm. Explaining the whole thing will take a long time. So I guess the main point is that if this ritual doesn't happen every few centuries, the whole world is fucked. So when the time comes, a string quartet and a vocalist have to get together and perform a certain piece at the top of Metronome Tower. <coughs> that explanation is way too vague. How do you expect to convince anybody of anything like that? Well, I can't help it. Explaining the whole thing would take too long. And it only seemed more surreal when we're sitting in a cute patisserie eating sweets. Ugh, you've got a point, but still. What kind of piece is it? Here. This is the second violin score. It's part the part you'll be playing if you come with us. Mm. Alto. Are you really sure about this? Hmm? Even setting aside what I told you before. I really don't want to be responsible for a kid while we're trekking all over the countryside. <laughs> Excuse you? Do you want to know how interested I'm not in having to convince your parents to let us drag you all over the country? Even if that ridiculously abbreviated explanation somehow convinced you? She roared like a dragon. Uh, seriously? Excuse you? I happen to be an adult. You expect me to believe that with your stature and outfit? <sighs> I'm 16, you jackass. Look at my ID. This has got to be a fake. No, it's real. I can vouch for that. Real personal identification cards have a magical imprint on them to make forgery all but impossible. That's why you have to go to census takers when you get them done, you see? That's also why these are valid in every country. Miss Otowa's ID has the proper imprint. She's 16 and a legal adult. Wait, seriously? <laughs> Serves you right. Don't go assuming people are kids just because they're short or because they like fashion. Actually, how are you still okay this far north in clothes like that? Oh, that? I can use fire and wind magic so I can maintain my body temperature and the layer of air right around my skin at reasonable levels. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. <clears throat> Whoa, talk about a waste of talent. Tegan, you don't need to be so strict. So, what do you think? This piece looks interesting, but it might be a little hard. I'd need to have enough time to practice it. Are you sure you'd want me on second violin? Yeah. For one thing, Tegan's actually really good. The first violin part's harder than the second violin. So I don't know if anybody other than Tegan could play it properly. I guess she'd have to be really good for you to ask her along with this personality. What was that, you little brat? Oh, don't mind her. She just has trouble taking musical styles less than a hundred years old seriously. Ugh, I should have figured. Look, I'm strictly avant-garde. I play how I do because I don't like a lot of the old academy styles. I know, we could tell that just from watching you play at the end. Then, why ask me along for something like this if that's the case? I'm asking you because of that. I think you'll be able to bring something to this performance that Tegan and Saki and I don't have. And, like I said with Saki, is it really okay to decide something this important with just your intuition? Why wouldn't it be... Now, now... Oh, no, wrong race. Now, now... Alto is the leader here. Shouldn't we just trust her? Listen, you haven't known Alto for as long as Tegan has. <laughs> 
And anyway, I think you'd be good fit with the second violin part. It's not as ornate as the first violin score, so you'll have more room to play freely. Hmm. I'll have to think about it for a little while. You guys are going to polyphony after this, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm headed there too. Let's go together. I'll give you my answer once. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. I'll give you my answer once I know if we'll be okay traveling together. I guess that's fair. To play together, we've got to be able to trust each other. I think so too. It's a very sensible decision. <clears throat> right, Tegan? Shut up. Anyway, they should be done with our instruments by now, so let's go pick them up. Mayrin, join the party! So, I will read you now Mayrin's, uh, profile! Atoa Mayrin, age 16, gender female, height 162 centimeters, birthday August 15th. She is a violinist. Has been traveling the world since she, became, she came of age, and is headed for polyphony in hopes to take part in the Star Festival, which I want to see. That sounds like fun. Currently in Del Segno to get her instrument restrung. She is friendly and expressive, the life of the party. Her tastes and preferences as a musician are very avant-garde, and her taste in names is something else. Has many interests and loves strawberries. Always at loggerheads with Tegan due to their different... They're different tastes, but gets along with Saki very well and seems to be in close confidence with him, and probably gets on with Alto like a house on fire. <laughs> That's just my opinion, I think. I don't know. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go get our instruments. I was trying to use the WASD. That did not actually work, because this is not how that works. Anyway, up we go. <coughs> Yo. Here you go, take care. Thanks! Okay, was that it? Seriously though? Okay, fine. Uh, so let's see. Mayrin uses Chakram, which are the the uh, circle thingies that Axel uses in Kingdom Hearts. That's all I know them from. Seriously. I think... Let's see. Should we leave right away? Mm. I guess let's make sure that we have all the ge right gear. And check around town to make sure we haven't missed any clues first. It's not like I'm in a hurry, so I'll just follow you guys. Okay. Alright, so I got everything that we need, and now we are going to go to... Uh... Whatever this pass is called, I forgot what it's called. Enter Pizzicato Trail. Yes! According to the map, Polyphony should be on the other side of this mountain pass. Ugh, more mountain climbing. The Pizzicato Trail is supposed to be longer than Arpeggio Pass. We'll probably wind up having to find somewhere to take shelter for the night. Eh, <sighs> really? It's the only way from here to Polyphony. This is a pretty mountainous region. On the other hand, there ought to be some caves or lean-tos or something that have been sealed from animals and monsters so that travelers can use them safely. See, it'll be okay. And there might be enough space to start a fire. I've decided I don't like to travel. No need to worry, my prince. I shall escort thee. <laughs> You're a funny girl. How did you stay this cheerful? Because Polyphony is waiting for us. Polyphony! Allons-y! Uh, are we going to be okay like this? <laughs> I'm glad we met such fun people. If you say so. Come on, Alonzi! Alonzi! Very Doctor Who. Yay! Onwards! We. Wait, what's down here? White Pinion. Yay, we can resurrect people if we need to. Go away! You evil snakies. Oh, we can't. <clears throat> yes, yes. Oh boy. Alright, I think that this is one of the chakras that, uh, like the upgrade that we can give to Meiru. Yes, good. That's important. Also, wow, Saki's almost dead. 
<clears throat> Smooth jazz. Okay. To be honest, I probably could have just used um, his healing spell on him. That would have been smarter. God damn it. Too. So we're not going to. Oh, come on. I just want to get up to the thing. The thing being in Chimera. That we get to fight. Yes. Well, I get to fight. You get to watch. Kind of. Sped up. So many fighting things recently. Uh, like, not normal encounters, but the big encounters. Then again, when I was playing this the first time, I uh, spent a lot more time doing stuff. Because it was the first time. And, uh, yes. I don't know how to explain it any better. <laughs> Sorry. I am bad at it. Anyway, up we go. Oh, come on. We were almost there. The first time I played this, I think it was like episode 6 that we ended up meeting Mayrin. So, you know, we're doing better. It's only episode 4. Boom. Got five naturals. Oh, this pass. I have been here a long time. Yay. Um, we're going to save. In, uh my file 7, this one, we, uh, well, I have been, um, training while I was re-recording, so, er, in between re-recording, I guess, would be a better way to phrase it. Anyway, uh, there's a big monster in the way. Uh, I want to take a break already. It's hard to see past the monster, but that looks like a cave back there. If we can beat it, we can probably stop for the night. Is waiting for it to go away no good? Well, it's already noticed us, so... Yeah, I guess the way the monsters are getting more violent, we're already out of luck. Why was I born into an era like this? Who knows? Okay, you guys, enough complaining. It's four against one, this won't be so hard. Says you! need to use the, uh, sharp that I put on Saki, but that's fine. Everybody levels up. You get a level, and you get a level. Except for you. Dead! And stay down! Let's check out that cave! Oh, and now everything is red. So, um, while we're in sunset slash dying mode, I just wanted to say, uh, Look forward to the conversation that we're going to have next time, because there's going to be a long conversation next time, uh, where they explain world tuning. So, you know, look forward to finding out what that is, finally. Well, more in depth, anyway, because Alto is not very good at explaining it. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I love you. Bye bye